down Dodge City and to the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the spell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. going out soon, Mr. Dillon? Oh, it's a little early yet, Chester. The things seem quiet enough. Well, why do you ask? Well, sir, I thought I might read this office up a little bit when you go. At night? Night wasn't made just for sleeping. That's what my mother used to tell us. <laughs> Chester, I'll bet you a dollar to a dime it was your father that said that. It was my father who... Well, of course. Did I say my mother? <laughs> oh, I sure never meant that. My goodness, no... She didn't believe in doing anything after dark except to read the Bible out loud. Well, that did you no harm. Anyway, you've more than made up for it since. Oh, now, Mr. Dillon, I'm not such a wild one as all that. Yeah, I don't know, Chester. Every now and then you get a look in your eye that spells trouble for a pretty girl somewhere. <laughs> That's pure talk. You're just pure talk. Hey, what's that? I don't know, but it's close by. Come on. Conrad is Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's... There. Look, right in the street. Yeah, I see him. There's no one else around. Take a look down the alley, Chester. Yes, sir. All right, Shaw. <laughs> Shaw? Shaw, you bad hurt. Shot me right in the back, Marshal. Must have been in the alley there. Any idea who it was? No, sir. None at all. I'm bleeding some, Marshal. Yeah, I know. Well, we better get you right up to docks. He can work on you better there. Uh, all right, a couple of you men, pick him up and follow me, huh? Didn't see a thing, Mr. Dillon. I went right to the end of the alley, but there was an area soul inside. Well, there's no use running around in the dark looking for him now. Maybe Shaw can tell us something after we get him in the docks here. Yes, sir. All right, put him on the couch there, huh? Easy with him now. Doc's not here, Mr. Dillon. I just looked out back. All right. Uh, you men, will you spread out and see if you can find Doc? Uh, try the Oliver Ganza first. Yeah, sure. Do something for me, Marshal. Yeah, don't you worry, Shaw. Doc will be here soon, and he's patched up a lot of men worse off than you are. Is there anything I can do, Mr. Dillon? Uh, yeah, here's his coat. Put it on the chair over there, huh? All right, sir. Shaw, do you mind if we talk while we're waiting for Doc? Well, if you want to know who did it, Marshal, I haven't an enemy in the world to know. Yeah, I know. But has anybody... Anybody at all said anything lately or done anything that might have led to this? No, no. Well, did you see him at all? No, sir. But I did hear him say something about Stone, Marshal. That's all I heard. Stone. Uh, is that a man's name? Could be. Anyway, that's all I heard. Maybe thought I was somebody called Stone. I don't know. Well, I don't know of any Stone. Not around here, anyway. No. Do you, Shaw? No, I don't. I'll see who that is, Chester. Yes, sir. Now, you, you let me know if there's anything I can do for you, Shaw. Sure will, Marshal. Thank you. I'll give it to him. Bye. Fellow found a hat out there, Shaw. Figured it must be yours. No. I, I'll put it over here with your coat. Is that your hat, Shaw? Yeah. Yeah, that's mine, all right. Hey, they found him, Mr. Dillon. He's coming across the street right now. Hey, Doc! Hey, Doc! Uh, he can't hear you, Chester. The window's closed. 
Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. Uh, the doc will be right here, Shaw. So long, Shaw. So long. <laughs> Peaceable fellow. It's a downright shame, that's what it is. Yeah. But he's right, Chester. He got shot by mistake. Oh? How come you're so sure, Mr. Dillon? Ah, his hat, for one thing. His hat? Yeah, it's the same shape and the same color as mine. It is? Yeah. And Shaw and I are built enough alike, we're close enough in size that somebody could possibly make a mistake. Especially at night. Well, Maybe. But that's stretching it some, if you ask me, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, except for one thing. I once knew a man named Stone. You knew him? You mean he's dead? Yeah. Well, if he's dead, then it couldn't have been him. Stone had a friend by the name of Danch, Chester. It might have been Danch. But why? Well, they were both cow thieves down in Matagorda County, it was. Mm. One day, Danch found his friend Stone hung from a live oak tree. I haven't seen Dan since that event, but I've heard that he's often sworn publicly that he's going to kill me for it. Well, did you? No, Chester. Probably some cattleman caught him using a straight iron and practiced a little quick justice. I wasn't even around. Uh-huh. I don't hang people, Chester. Oh, no, of course not. Anyway, if that was Dan, he's probably still in Dodge. You'd have heard he shot the wrong man soon enough. You... Going to go look for him, Mr. Dillon? Well, it's better than letting him look for me, Chester. Especially seeing the way he goes about it. Well, uh, what's he look like? In case I see him first. Uh, he's tall, thin. He's got one mark you can't miss. You're standing on his left side, anyway. What's that? He had a fight somewhere and he got his ear chewed off. Oh, yeah. Unless he's growed another one, that ought to make him easy enough to spot. I might wander down and see if he's been around the Dodge house any, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. I'm going to make a round of the saloons. I'll uh, be at the Texas Trail last. Yes, sir. You sure you don't want a drink, Matt? No, no, not tonight, Kitty. (laughs) You must be expecting trouble. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Kitty, tell me something. Have you heard the name Danch around here lately? Danch? Yeah. No. No, I haven't. What's he look like, Matt? Well, he's a tall man. He's missing an ear. Oh, yeah. I saw a fellow like that a couple of nights ago. He was in here real late. Was that so? Yeah. You haven't seen him since? No, but I could ask the other girls. Hi, Mr. Dillon. Hello, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. Now, Mr. Dillon, you know that cheap rooming house out the edge of town, the one they call the Prairie Dog Hole? Yeah, what about it, Chester? Well, sir, I went to every other place, and then I tried it just on a chance. Sure enough, he was there. You mean you saw him? Oh, no, sir, he's gone. They said he rode in after dark last night, and he left before dawn. He hasn't been back since, and he took his horse with him. Oh. Uh, Yours. No. Uh, I'll put it over here for your coat. Is that your hat, Shaw? Yeah. Yeah, it's mine. I think I'll keep sniffing the air just the same. The next afternoon, about sundown, Shaw suddenly died. He hadn't been badly hurt, but as Doc said, you never know how a man's heart will react. Anyway, Shaw... The man without an enemy in the world was dead, murdered, and in place of me. That night, I was walking down Front Street thinking about it and wondering why it is that the innocent so often get hurt. And all at once, I had a feeling that I was being followed. I walked on until I reached an alley and then turned into it casually. Once out of sight, I ran halfway down it and ducked behind a rain barrel waited. A few seconds later, I knew I'd been right. (laughs) 
Depends on you, mister. All right. Now, come on. Get up. Yeah. Yeah. You you got my gun. I'm unarmed. You went off when you jumped me, that's all. Shut up. Yeah. And turn around. All right. The jail's right around the corner. Walk ahead of me. And walk careful. I, I will. Sure, I will. That's it. Now open the door and go right on in. Sure, Marshal. Well, who is this, Mr. Dillon? I don't know. Who are you, mister? My name's Lee. Lee what? Bill Lee. All right, Lee. Now, why did you follow me down that alley with a gun in your hand? Oh, I wasn't following you, Marshal. No? Well, what were you doing? Well, I was just, uh, it was dark down there, and I didn't want to take any chances, you know? All right, Lee. Did you shoot Shaw last night? Oh, that fellow I got shot? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, no, Marshal, why would I shoot him? There's no reason, none at all. You made a bad mistake. Ah, uh, look here, Marshal, you can't drag me in here and accuse me. Shut of... up! Now, all I want out of you is one thing. Did Danch hire you to kill me? You got nothing on me, Marshal. I've never heard of no Danch. Oh? No. All right, lock him up, Chester. Lock me up? What for? For lying. Now, wait a minute. That's illegal. It sure is. No, I mean, you, you can't put me in jail for... You just... show him what we can do, Chester. All right, mister. Right through that door. Go on. I see you tried for this, Marshal. I I know my rights. Lee, the only right you got left is to be hung. And I hope it takes place real soon. We will return to the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first... A reminder to all vacation-bound Americans. Blood donations fall off in the summertime. Blood is vital to the saving of American lives. Give a pint of blood. Ask anyone who has. It's simple, painless. Make an appointment with your local Red Cross chapter. Give a pint of blood and save a life before you go on your summer vacation. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. A lot of men on the frontier who were bad, and some of them were worse than others. But I always felt the rottenest kind was a man like Lee, whose guns could be bought. Every morning, Chester brought him out of his cell, and I questioned him, but he admitted nothing, day after day. Now, we kept him in jail anyway, and I hoped Danch would hear of it and come into town to do the job himself. But it isn't a good feeling to walk down the street and know that any minute you might get shot in the back. And finally, I got tired of it. I wanted to know where Danch was. Go ahead, Lee. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. You're wasting your time, Marshal. For the last time, Lee. You gonna tell me where Danch is? I've told you a hundred times. I don't know Danch. Where'd he make his deal with you? I don't know nothing about no deal. I'm an innocent man, Marshal, and as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to write the government about you. Well, when you do, tell them how you messed up killing me. I'll huh? tell them nothing. I, I mean, uh, I'll fix you, Marshal. Yeah, sure, sure. Tell me something, Lee. How does it feel to kill a man for money? <laughs> don't look at me, Marshal. Nobody's paid me nothing. 
Yeah, but what about you? You get paid for shooting people. You get paid regular for it. Lee, I'm going to hit you right on the head and drag you back to yourself. Sure. I'm not armed. And I won't be armed. Now, wait a minute, Chester. Wait a minute. Just let him be. But that kind of talk just makes me boil. Yeah, I know. But I got a better idea of what to do with him. What? Now, we're not getting anywhere this way. Lee just isn't going to tell us anything. He's got his mind made up. I don't know anything, I told you. So keeping him locked up isn't going to help. You don't mean that... Yeah, turn him loose. Oh, no. Well, about time. You can't do that, Mr. Dillon. He'll just try to kill you again the first chance he gets. Maybe. But, Mr. Dillon, I don't... All right, go on, Lee. You're free. Now, get out of here. You really mean it, Marshal? You heard me. There's your gun. Take it. Don't pick it up by the butt. That's better. I wouldn't try nothing, Marshal. You'd die if you did. You're not fast enough to kill me face to face. No, no. I wouldn't try. Well, bye, Marshal, Chester. I'm leaving. I'm taking the next Santa Fe dabbly. So long. I'll leave. Yeah? There's just one thing. What? You said I get paid for shooting people. Oh, now, Marshal, I didn't mean nothing. No, in a way, you're right. Sometimes I have to when there's no other way out. I understand. But I won't get paid for shooting you. What? No. I figure killing you will be part pleasure and part self-defense. What are you talking about, Marshal? Just that. Why would you want to shoot me? I don't like men of your kind. But, Marshal, you you can't. I can't let you get any farther than that boardwalk. I'd be a fool if I did. Now, go on, Lee. Go on out the door. Then I'm coming right after you. No. I'd feel a lot safer with you dead. Go on now. I'm staying right here. All right, then I'll kill you right here. Your arm. No. I'll give you my gun. Don't touch it. Don't kill me, Marshal. Don't kill me. I'll tell you anything you want. It's too late. Oh, no, no, Marshal. You'll probably lie anyway. No, I won't. I, listen to me. Dance is down the Santa Fe Trail about 75 miles across Cimarron, a place called Wagon Bed Springs. He is, huh? Yeah, he, he's waiting there for me. He's waiting to pay me when I... I... When you kill me... Is that right? Uh, I, I'm not going to kill you, Marshal. No, no. Take his gun, Chester, before he changes his mind. He's a pretty brave man. Sure. Sure. Take it here. Uh, I told you. Uh, let me go now, huh? You know, Danch isn't going to like your having killed the wrong man and me still walking around in good health, Lee. I hadn't thought of that. No. And the law wouldn't like it if I turned a murderer loose. So lock him up, Chester. You know the way, Lee. Mr. Dillon, you know what that cussed Lee told me just before we left? He said Danch had told him to yell laps for stone when he shot you. Well, I figured that. (laughs) You know, I think he really believed you'd have killed him if he'd walked out of that office. Cowards are easy to bluff, Chester. Now, when when we get to Wagon Bed Springs, I want you to stay out of the way when I find Danch. Yes, sir, I will. Unless he has friends there. Yeah. I suppose he really believes you hung that fella stone, don't he? Yeah, it seems that way. All right, let's pull up here, Chester. Oh. Oh. It's just over the hill there. We'll go on in as soon as it's dark. Wagon Bed Springs boasted a hotel with half a dozen rooms, a restaurant, and two saloons. All built of adobe. We're just a stopping point for bullwhackers and mule skinners driving their freight wagons along the Santa Fe Trail. And such men didn't carry much money with them. 
When night came, Chester and I rode in, found a corral for our horses, and scouted the town. Danch wasn't anywhere in sight. So I decided to begin asking questions. Beer or whiskey, man? Beer. Same for me. Strangers, ain't you? Yeah. We're supposed to meet a friend here. Well, look around, mister. I have. I can't find him. Yeah. <laughs> if he's in Wagon Bed Springs, you can find him. There you are. Thank you. This ain't a big town like Dodge and them places. Wished it was. You know, I'd like to see Dodge sometime. <sighs> well, that's where my friend may have gone. Maybe you saw him when he passed through here as a tall man, one ear. Oh? Calls himself Danch. Oh, sure, I, I know him. Uh, yeah, he was here quite a while. But he left. Just yesterday. He's, uh, he's gone to Texas, mister, not died. Uh, is that so? He tell you that? That's what he said when he left. All right. Thanks. Sure. You stay in here long? Uh, not long. Here's for the beer. Uh, we'll be back as soon as we eat. Good. Say, did you mean it in there, Mr. Dillon? Are we really going to eat supper again? Chester, that barkeep said he'd never seen Dodge. Well, he was there last fall. I remember his face. Well, now, what's he trying to... And if to... he was in Dodge, he knows who I am. Danch is here somewhere, and that barkeep's going to get word to him mighty fast. Here, let's cross the street. Uh, where are we going? I will follow him when he goes to tell Danch I'm here. Uh. He'll leave as soon as he thinks we're in the restaurant. All right, he won't see us here. Can I go with you, Mr. Dillon? If you stay out of the way. I will, sir. I'd figured it right. And in a few minutes, the barkeep came out into the street and walked down toward the edge of town. We followed some distance behind until he reached a small dobe hut. And there he knocked and then disappeared inside. The hut had no windows we could see, but I sent Chester around back to make sure. He returned in a moment, and I told him to wait while I went up to the door. Who's that? You're trapped, Danch. Come out with your hands up. All of you say you're fool. I didn't see him. He said he went to supper. I ought to kill you. I got nothing to do with this. I'm getting out of here. Go ahead. Get out. Marshal! Marshal, I'm coming out. I ain't even armed, so don't shoot. Okay. Come on. Go on. You, you gotta open it more than that, Danch. I can't get out. All right, keep your hands up. Chester. I'll take him. Keep an eye on him. Come on, you. I won't do anything. He paid me to warn him, that's all. Danch. You're in a bad spot. You can rot in there. I don't suppose you'd give me a fighting chance any more than you gave Stone one, Dylan. I was in Galveston when Stone got hung, Danch. That's a lie. Oh, it doesn't matter. How come you hired Lee to shoot me? You lost your nerve? How many cattlemen in Dodge, that's why. Yeah, I forgot your reputation with cows. And I don't care how you die anyway. Yeah, you talk big for a man who's practically buried. I'm coming out, Dylan. And I'm coming with a gun. You better not do it, Danch. I'll have to kill you. I'd hang anyway. And I just might get you. I backed off around the corner of the hut and waited. Danch opened the door wide. And he suddenly sprang out, a gun ready in each hand, expecting to face me. He stood there for a second before he realized that he'd been trapped again. And then he made his choice and started for the corner of the hut where I was. Uh, 
All right, drop them, Doc. Okay, Chester. Is he dead? Yeah. Well, he tried to kill you, Marshal. It was self-defense, pure and Oh, self-defense. shut up. What do we do with this man, Mr. Dillon? Let him go, Chester. He's just scum. All right, sir. And you'll bury him, mister. He paid you. Yes, sir. I'll take care of it. And if I ever see you on Dodge, you'll go to jail. Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't be coming in. Come on, Chester. Let's get out of here. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, and Lou Krugman. Parley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week. As Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. This is the season for people to have letters added to their names as universities award degrees to scholars. Here on CBS Radio, we're having a somewhat similar procedure. This Monday, the letters KQV, WHYN, and KTHS will be added to CBS Radio. Yes, on behalf of our affiliated stations from coast to coast, CBS Radio welcomes to the network where America listens most, station KQV in Pittsburgh. Station WHYN, serving the greater Springfield Holyoke area, and radio station KTHS, serving Little Rock, Arkansas. This is Roy Rowan speaking over the CBS Radio Network.